Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Mm, mm -mm. Wow. Well, I expected a little bit better response than that. I know you're still processing. I'll tell you what, uh, let's, let's do this. Uh, just to help me as we begin this, stand up with me. We've been talking about atmosphere. And uh, we're going to continue that today because I think it's so timely and God knows how to tie it together. And uh, when you hear what I'm going to share today, you'll think the three words that we've shared already this morning that we sat down and talked about it. But the Holy Spirit has a way of orchestrating things that are amazing. And so uh, as we talk about atmosphere today, you know, everything has to have an atmosphere that sustains it. Even this virus. In fact, I, I, I heard something this week, and they said, you know, this thing is, uh, you hear all kinds of stuff, but they said, this thing, it doesn't like the heat. Come on, heat. Come on, baby. Let's, let's get this thing cranked up in the mid-80s, upper 90s. It'll be fine with me. Thank you, Jesus. God's working. But uh, here's the thing I want us to understand, and we're going to get into this in just a minute. I'm going to make you stand for just another minute or two. Everything has to have an atmosphere, uh, an environment uh, to sustain that environment. Faith needs an atmosphere to sustain it. Fear needs an atmosphere to sustain it. And the world right now is being besieged by the spirit of fear and panic. And if you haven't noticed it already, we're in warfare. In every battle, listen, in every battle, the first, the front lines are marked by the first battle is always with truth and lies. You win the battle of what people believe and you have accomplished a whole lot in, 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 uh, in trying to, to win that war. We have to be wise in the midst of our present crisis. I want you to know and understand. I'm, I'm not just ignoring this. I'm not acting like it's nothing. I understand what's going on. I got it. All right. Somebody said, you're not being realistic. I am being realistic. And I understand this is serious. But I also understand this is serious. I got it. I got it. I got that. I know it. Every battle, uh, the, first, the first lines of every battle is truth and lies. We have to be wise in the midst of our present crisis, but we also have to not assume that every bit of information that we get is accurate. Well, it's got to be so. I read it on the Internet. Give me a break. <laughs> we need to find reliable sources and wisdom, but most of all, we've got to trust the one who was called the way, the truth, and the life. That is the first and foremost thing that we've got to do. But here's what, I am, here's what I'm saying, and Brother Fred touched on this, and so here I'm, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to let you sit down in just a minute. But even in this, in the midst of all of this, this thing can be turned around because here's something the Lord spoke to me this week. The darker the season, the brighter the church can shine. There's going to be opportunities for, for ministry right now Unlike any time in my lifetime other than 9-11, the, 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 the darker the season, the brighter the church can sign, shine. The more trying the times, the more relevant the church becomes. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. I read an account this week of, of a, a woman who was married to an atheist for over 30 years. And she said this. For the first time in my life, my husband let me lay hands on him and pray for him this week. He's been an avowed atheist this entire life. I'm telling you, he's the God of the turnaround. I saw an account this week, and I want our church, if there's, if, if there's things that we can do, I am looking, listen, in the midst of this, we need to be looking for ministry opportunities. Now, I read an account this week, Luke, and I, this lady said she was walking through a Walmart parking lot, and she saw an older couple. 
They were sitting over in their car and they, they looked like they, they were like looking around at people and, and, and they had their window just cracked and they had gotten afraid and come to find out they'd been sitting there for 45 minutes trying to get somebody to stop and said, would you please go into the store and get our groceries for us? We're afraid to go in. She took that money. She went in. She went through that grocery list. She brought it back out to their car, opened that back door, put it in, prayed over them, and sent them on their way. God can shine through us in the midst of it all. And if there's things that we can do, I am believing for the church to rise up. Everybody say, church, rise up. Give God praise in this house. Hallelujah. You can be seated. But you know, there's something that, that I am sensing in the midst of all of this. And I believe, and I talked, this, uh, I talked the last time we were together, that I shared about hunger. And I'm, I'm believing that God is going to use this thing to create hunger in people. Here's what, I've, here's what I'm discovering. God, give us a, 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 a glimpse and a taste of, of, of eternity in this sense. People are taking time and doing wash and, and washing themselves washing their hands and I'm doing that too I'm, I'm a little more conscious of that absolutely nothing wrong with that but here's the thing we'll take all this time to wash our hands to make sure that everything's right with that when eternity is all of us are going to stand in eternity and the question is, have we been washed in the blood of Jesus? What a time to say, hey, I see you washing your hands, but let me ask you, have you been washed in the blood of Jesus? We are taking all this time, and I'm not against it, to prepare ourselves for something that might come. When I got news for you, there is going to be something inevitable that will come and that is we will all stand before Almighty God one day. Everybody from kings and queens to the person who's homeless on the street, there is whether or not this disease is coming or not, there's all kind of speculation, but I got news for you. There will come a day when we will stand before him and the washing of our hands is not what's gonna get us there. It's gonna be being washed in that blood of Jesus. So somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. So we need to be prepared. We need to be, be, be preparing for that day, but I'm also believing that, listen, that the church is going to rise up as confusion reigns. The truth is going to be more important than ever. Listen to this. As fear consumes, this can be our finest hour to share faith in Jesus and the transforming love of God. And listen, yes, I do take it serious, but I got news for you. In Jesus' name, do not let negativity win the day. Amen. Don't let it. Don't let it. Man, and I began to write some things down this morning. We began talking a few weeks ago about atmosphere, about how important it is, and how we can help create that environment. We talked about hunger. And because it, it's so important because hunger is, is necessary because anything in your life will die unless it's fed. Anything in your life will die unless it's fed. But the good thing about that is if you don't feed the bad stuff, it'll die too. So keep this in mind over the next few weeks. Are we going to feed our fears or are we going to feed our faith? Now, the second thing that I want to talk about, and this, man, you, you hear everybody get up here this morning and it's just amazing how God orchestrates this. We said this first thing that's necessary to sustain atmosphere and that helps create atmosphere is hunger. Secondly, worship. Now, remember, this was, this, these notes were done a little over two weeks ago. Worship. And I had something rise up in me this morning that's not in the notes, but we're, if you will, you know this story. But turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 
Everybody pretty much, if you've been in church very long, you know this story. But it rose up inside of me because during a time of national crisis, this is what took place in 2 Chronicles 20. There was a national crisis. And if if you look in verse 1, this is the story of Jehoshaphat. It happened that after this that the people of Moab and the people of Ammon and others with them besides uh, the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. They were surrounded. And verse 2 says something really, really, uh, I didn't see it until just a moment ago. Then some some, some came and told Jehoshaphat, listen to this, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea. Is that descriptive of today or what? You better believe it is. But listen to what his response was. They're surrounded. It's a crisis, a national crisis. And he's going to get instructions from the Lord. And in verse 12, he says this. Lord, we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Watch this. Nor do we know what to do. And then he says the last part of that verse. But our eyes are on you. Oh, y'all not helping me. He said, we don't know what the answers are to all of this, but we know this. Our eyes are on you. And then, oh man, God begins to give him a divine strategy for a nation in crisis. Where are all my praisers this morning? Are there, do I have any praisers in this house? Do I have any worshipers in this house? He gives him a divine strategy and he says, Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children stood before the Lord. And you know, I got to thinking about this. If you look in the natural... That is not a very smart solution when you are surrounded and you've got nations coming against you and everything in the world is going wrong and you've got people, Jay, who are wanting to kill you, who are wanting to wipe you off the face of the earth. The worst thing you could probably do is get everybody together. Oh, so quiet. But that's exactly what the Lord instructed him to do. He said, let's gather together. And then I want you to do something. Man. The Spirit of the Lord, verse 14, came upon Jehaziel, the son of this one, the son of that one, the son of all, so forth, all in the midst of the congregation. He's a son of 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 a gun. Verse 15, and he said, Listen, all you of Judah, And you inhabitants of Jerusalem, listen, United States of America, listen world, listen people of God, and more than that, listen church. Thus says the Lord, do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. And he, he gave them a word from heaven first. And then he gave them instructions. Verse 19. The Levites of the children of the Kohathites of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. They rose up early in the morning. They went out. They consulted with the people. They appointed those who would sing to the Lord. Verse 22, and when they began to sing, oh man, I guess I'm just going to have to have a good time by myself. When they began to sing and they began to praise the Lord, I said, when they began to sing and when they began to praise the Lord, 
When they begin to sing and when they begin to praise the Lord, then, 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 then the Lord begin to set ambushments against the plans of the enemy. What we did this morning is not a futile exercise. It is the plan of Almighty God. It is, it is not entertainment. It is spiritual warfare. You better believe it. And I believe this morning that there were forces that were released into the atmosphere as we sang, as we worshiped, as we lift our hand, lifted our hands, as we begin to exalt the King of kings and the Lord of lords, then the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, the people of Moab, against Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. Oh, man. You, you, you just missed that. I'm just beside myself, Byron. I can't help it. You just missed that against the, the warfare had come against Judah, Jay. Somebody tell me what the name Judah means. Devil, you cannot have our praise. You will not defeat our praise. You will not defeat our worship. You will not have victory over our praise. You can come against Judah, but you will not win. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am declaring we are releasing our praise. We are releasing our worship. We are declaring who our God is, and we're going to watch him set ambushments against the plan of the enemy. Hallelujah. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes. And you know, I got to thinking about this thing. And I'm, I'm a little off script, but I'm not really. We're talking about atmosphere. Now, I want you to think with me, because I'm just like you. I get alerts on my phone. My phone has blown up this week. If it's possible to get overload, it did every 30 seconds. And folks, let me tell you, we don't just wash our hands, we wash ourselves. What am I washing myself in over and over and over and over and over? But, but Brother Scotty, don't you know? We got to know. I'll, listen, I'm not saying you need to bury your head in the sand and not know what's going on. But listen, folks, enough is enough. Okay, we got it. I understand. Good. Yeah. Good. Now, I understand what's going on, but here's the thing. What am I washing myself in? Follow me now. How can I expect my house to be filled up 10, 12 hours a day with bad report after bad report after bad report after bad report after how bad it's going to be after all those predictions and live in victory. Here's what I'm saying. It is time to wash ourselves in worship. It is time to wash ourselves in praise. Don't think I can, you can come up in here and in 30 minutes or 40 minutes, you're going to get all your need. I'm telling you, we're going to crank up the worship music. And I like we do already. You get in her car, and I'm going to tell you, you will jump out of your skin when that thing first cranks up because she's got it rolling, baby. I mean, it's cooking. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, you just all of a sudden, you're just real quiet. And then, hallelujah. That music blasts out. Folks, let me tell you what. What are we going to wash ourselves in this week? Come on, I'm preaching this morning. I'm preaching to me. What am I going to wash myself in? We're going to wash ourselves in the Word of God. But listen, we're going to wash ourselves in the praise and worship of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Because what I magnify becomes bigger in my life. The possibilities begin to expand. Man, are y'all with me this morning? Wow. And God turned it around. 
for Jehoshaphat. And he's going to turn it around for us. As we wash our home, as we wash our lives, as we wash our minds in worship. And I am praying, listen, as we do that, as we pray, and, and, and they talked about uh, that incense. Let that incense begin to arise as we worship, as we pray. That incense arises before the throne of God. And here's what happens when this, this is released. Oh, man, this is so good. And this is all in Jehoshaphat. If you go back and look at it, as we do that, church, God will give leaders a divine strategy. Yes, yes, there you go. Amen. Let me tell you another, a couple of things that I've learned out of this week, and this is practical, and I'm just going to say it because it needs to be said because we're dealing with so much stuff. Elections matter. And let me tell you where I'm going with this. Listen to me. You are finding out, we are finding out this week just how quickly many of your freedoms and my freedoms can be taken away. You don't want the wrong people deciding what is important and what is not. You better pray and you better vote and you better hear from heaven. Elections matter. Susan and I are scheduled to, to leave a week from tomorrow, fly out to uh, California and be with our family. We don't know if they're going to let us go or not. There are people who work out of this country right now. They don't know if they're going to get to go back to work or not. There's all kinds of things going on. Here's my point. I appreciate a government looks after us. I get it. I'm, I'm thankful for that. But elections matter. You want people making decisions for us and deciding what is going to be restricted and what is not that are righteous people that are making decisions out of a godly perspective. Elections matter, brother and sister. And you're seeing it. You are seeing it. So I'm just telling you, these are things that we all need to consider during a time of natural crisis. So glory to God. I'm preparing to win this battle. I believe we as the church are preparing to win this battle. God's going to use us. But here's the other thing. Here's another thing that has realistically come alive inside of me. And I'm praying it's coming alive in every, in, in, in every person in the world. We have been shaken. The world's been shaken. But here's the reality that the world has been shaken to, I pray. There are things in our lives that we need that only God can do. We have gotten, we have gotten to the place, you know what, man, we're pretty smart. We got all these things working for us. We got the smartest people in the world working for us. All of this stuff, we're blessed, we're prosperous, we're doing all this stuff, and we got all this. Well, suddenly people begin to realize, I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much money you got. There's a little fellow somewhere over in a market in Wuhan, China, and I have been in one of those markets, by the way, those where that stuff started. I've been in one of those. Somebody over there, a little fella who nobody would consider important really, has done something or something was released that shook the world to the realization, I don't care how good your doctors are, I don't care how good your medical system is, I don't care how much money you got, I don't care how affluent you are, there are things in our lives only our great God can do. And that is not a bad thing when we come to realize, man, we need you, Lord Jesus. We need you, Jehovah God. We need you, Holy Spirit. It is a time for the church to rise up and say, I know what the answer is. I know who the answer is. And his name is Jesus. Somebody say, yes, Brother Scotty, that is good preaching. And so there are things in our life. I'm back in my notes again, guys that only God can do for us. Some things no one else can do. Listen, not government, not science, not politicians, not even money. And it is time that we rise up and know this. And listen, let me show you this in one more place. And I'm realizing what time it is. I don't know if there's any place that's open to eat to get today or not. I'm not keeping up with it. <laughs> Waffle House is always open. 
You know what? Waffle House is like the throne of God. It's like the throne room, baby. Let me tell you, you can come in 24-7, and there you are. Harold, he's got a table spread for us. But this same thing that I'm preaching about, about Jehoshaphat, God showed me this. He said, son, you have got to wash yourself, bathe yourself in worship, bathe yourself in praise. Put yourself in an atmosphere to where that spirit of fear cannot rule over you. Because here's the thing, this environment, I know camera people are like getting seasick back there trying to keep up with me. That's all right. I love you watching online. We believe in God for great things for you. That spirit of fear, it has to have an atmosphere that will sustain it. And let me show you how this works. You hear report after report after report after report. And again, I'm not saying we ought to just go hide out, but here's what I am saying. The more you meditate on it, the more it will give you a train of thoughts that will take you somewhere. Oh, man. I know where this is going. Oh, man. Oh, man. So if, if that spirit of fear has a train of thoughts that will take you somewhere, the spirit of faith has a train of thoughts that will take you somewhere. That's good preaching, man. And here's what I've discovered, Jay. When I'm up here this morning and we're singing and we're worshiping, man, that spirit of fear don't have a chance. Because I suddenly begin to see myself and I begin to see this church and I begin to see everything what the, the, the world is going through and I begin to see it in a different light. I begin to see it, Thomas, in a different perspective. I begin to realize, man, let me tell you something. The potential and the possibilities that can come out of this God can be glorified. The church can rise up. There can be victory again shouted as the greatest revival the world has ever seen ends up coming around out of this thing. Bless God, because that is the kind of God we serve. How many of you would like to see a worldwide revival and let the enemy shoot himself in the foot again? But, you know, this same principle worked. And watch this. Man, this is so good. I don't know if anybody's getting a lot out of this but me, but here it is. 2 Kings 3, Elisha. Elisha found himself, and I'm going to read it. Let me set it up for you. Elisha found himself listening to three kings, three people in leadership who uh, ended up dealing with some circumstances that they thought, listen, would be over quickly. They thought it would end quickly. They thought the battle would end quickly. But it ended up being harder than they thought it was going to be. It ended up taking a little longer than they thought it was going to be. How many of you know that life can be unpredictable? We're discovering that. Surprises come. And they ran out of something, watch this, that they took for granted. Some of you connecting the dots. They ran out of water. <laughs> now, Andrew, we got to have $60,000 for Latvia this year. The highest bidder <laughs> that wants to give to our Latvia conference this thing is waiting right here on between Scotty and Susu. You can pick it up after church. I never in my life, ever. And listen, if you think it's something here, we've been talking to our kids, FaceTiming them the last few days. You ought to be living in Southern California. In fact, and I was so taken by surprise by this and just shocked. You know, it's hard not to get. Anyway, uh, you know what I'm talking about. So we're talking to them, and they said, you know, they think we're, we're just kind of waiting to see what the restrictions are going to be. We're still planning on leaving a week from tomorrow and go out there for a few days. And we asked them, we said, is there anything we can bring y'all? Because <laughs> we didn't know what was going on as far as all these details. Because here, listen to this. And boy, you Southern folks, you got to love this. 
Because when we go, we usually will take them some gumbo mix. Because they ain't got no gumbo mix. I ain't Southern, but they ain't got no gumbo mix out in Southern California. They don't have a cornmeal, that kind of, kind of stuff that we like to, Southern folks like. Can you imagine? <laughs> Talking about living on the mission field. But <laughs> Jackie said, no, I think we're good. Well, they had put in their grocery order like Robbie talked about this morning. And uh, first of all, they said, we just don't know what's going on, but they can't, they were not delivering it today, and it's not ready. And then the next day when it came, they said, no toilet paper and no paper towels and no, no hand stuff. So they were like, yep, if when you come, if you could bring us some toilet paper, we would really, really be grateful. Spirit of fear and panic can take over, and all of us can be affected by it. And it affects all of our lives. And so let me tell you what we did. We said, well, it's no problem. <laughs> <Little different. laughs> Tell about naive. <laughs> they said, let's just run up to big box store, Randy. Let's just run up to big box store. And I walked in there, and there was nothing but empty shelves. I was like, what in the world, child? What in the whole world, child, Henry says, our, our grandson. He'll say, what in the whole world, child? You've got to be kidding me. So I thought, well, I'll go, I don't know, I'll go to the drugstore. They'll, they'll have some. I went in there. Empty. Susan went to another one while I was at one, another one to try to pick up. Because we just needed regular supplies plus to them. She got up there and she called me and she said, they let me buy one pack. Come up here now and get another one so we can send it to the kids. So I jumped in the truck and went flying up there. By the time I got there in literally less than five minutes, it was gone. I said, Lord, I need some favor. I never, in listen, can I just tell you, never in all of my years did I ever think that I would be saying, God, <laughs> I thank you for a spirit of favor on me and my household to get us some toilet paper. I never, ever thought I would ever be in that place. But I did. And while I was standing there, then one of the managers was there. He said, you know what? He said, I think I got some in the back. I'm like looking around. And he did. He found me a 16-pack. <laughs> Glory to God. We're laughing about this, but I tell you, it just, it's just the time that we're in when you realize how this thing has been so... Uh, and it just, just a rumor is all it takes. Just a rumor. Listen, I'm going to start some rumors in Jesus' name, that this thing is dying. We already spoke it this morning. We already prophesied it this morning. We're already seeing it in Jesus' name that it will not rule in this state, that it will not rule in this city, it will not rule in our lives, it will not rule in our family, it will not rule and reign over us. Yes, we deal with reality, but at the same time, we know that our God is for us, and if God is for us, who can be against us? And in this atmosphere of praise, we begin to release that. But, you know, back to that story. I got, I'm, I'm going to quit in a minute. Here, our, our grandson said, he said, Papa, we went to the store last night. He said, people, he said, they were like, he said, and he's just trying to describe it. He said, they were like mindless zombies. He said they had security guards breaking people up to keep them from fighting over toilet paper. Now, folks, I know that sounds funny, but here's the thing. Church, it is time for us to rise up in another spirit rather than the spirit of the world, the spirit that is 
fanned and flamed by everything that we continually hear, we've got to be another spirit. And here's the thing. You are getting ready. Bless the Lord. You are getting ready to see the worst in people, but you are also, I prophesy, getting ready to see the best in people as the Spirit of the living God rises up. Where we encourage what, what Matthew said over us this morning, where we love one another and we don't judge each other, but we pray in Jesus' name in compassion for those who deal with things that we haven't even imagined in our mind. And I'm going to tell you this. I look around this room this morning. Boy, I'm having fun. First of all, Susan and I this morning, I said, well, we were talking like, well, I don't know how many people come out. And I said, well, I'll tell you this, the ones that will be there, son, they'd be ready. I look around this room, and I see people who fit in certain age categories that they have been saying this and they've been saying that, and I'm telling you, I am looking at the greatest warriors I've ever seen in my life who refuse. Boy, I tell you what, give yourself a hand in this house. Somebody stir it up in here. Hallelujah! And I tell you, we're going to be mindful of everybody. That's, that's not, I, you know, listen, let me just say this. I'm going to say it. Some people may disagree with me, but that's okay. I believe in being real. I believe in being, living where we are. If somebody said, well, what, what would you do if you got that thing and you were coughing? First of all, I would not inflict myself upon somebody else. I would be considerate. I would love them. I would be believing God for myself, but I'm not going to put something on you to show everybody how great faith I've got. We can love each other and still walk in faith. We can do both. We can accomplish both. But I'm telling you, the, I look around this room today and I see mighty men and women of God. Amen. I got to close this thing out. Amen. I'm preaching so good this it's morning. Good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Some of y'all need to listen to this over again and again and again and again. Because here's the thing. You can't expect me to counteract 10 hours a day of over and over and over and over in 45 minutes. And even in our worship, we got to crank it up in our automobiles. I'm telling you, if you can't do anything else, if they start putting restraints on us, bless God, get in your car. Crank up the music. I'm talking about some bass. Boom, 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 boom. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of... Oh, whose report will you believe? You know, and that's an old one, but you know what? Some of them, just crank some stuff up. If you can't do nothing else, but create an atmosphere where something can rise up inside of us besides all of that stuff that's going on out there. But now watch this. Not only does hunger help create atmosphere, not only does worship create atmosphere. Now, did I finish with Elisha? I didn't, did I? I didn't read it. Did I read that? <laughs> Brother Scotty. 2 <laughs> Kings, Elisha was facing uh, a time when he, the, these kings were like, man, we got all this stuff going on. We don't know. We thought this was going to be over by now. We don't know what to do. And Elijah said, here was, here, was, here was what he said, and I love it. He said, bring me a musician. <laughs> What's this? Bring now, but now bring me a musician. In other words, I'm going to re coach, I'm going to reset the atmosphere. If I'm going to hear me, church, if I'm going to hear from God, I'm going to have to reset the atmosphere. Mikey said, bring me a musician. And then it happened. Then it happened. See, some of you just thought that music was just getting you all giddy just, and, and it's doing more than that. You know what I'm talking about. 
Then it happened that when the music, musician, musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Oh, do I have any worship leaders in this house this morning? Do I have any worshipers in the house this morning? The hand of the Lord came upon him. And he... And he said, he started prophesying. I'm telling you, he, and listen, he became more than a parrot to what he was hearing in a 24-hour national news cycle. He started hearing from God. He started hearing from heaven. And he said, <laughs> thus says the Lord. Keep it going, guys. Make this valley full of ditches. Are you making your home, your life, your future full of di ditches? He said, make this valley full of ditches. For you'll not see wind, you won't see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water. There may not be a cure on the horizon, but bless God, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I am digging me some ditches in my life. I am digging me some ditches in my family. I am digging me some ditches in this church. And he said, you'll not see wind, you'll not see rain, but this valley shall be filled with water. Remember now, they had run out of water. So that you, what was the rest of that? You know, I can't see the bottom part of it. Let me just grab, grab it right here. You'll not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water. Watch this. So that you, your cattle, and Fred and your animals will drink. That is encompassing everything about business, about your provision, about everything that you need. He said, it's going to all be taken care of. And that is what I am prophetically speaking and praying. And your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Wow. So I want you to join with me. And I'm, I'm, I am asking this church, let's dig some ditches with our praise. And let me tell you what else you can do. F fill you up some water pots. What does that mean? John chapter 2. They ran out of wine at a wedding. Jesus gave them instructions. He said, fill those pots with water. And I'm going to tell you what. As they fill those pots with water, they had to feel so foolish. What are y'all doing meeting up in there? Don't you know what's going on in the world? We're filling our pots with water. And they were carrying those water pots. And I can, I, I can imagine them looking down. It don't look like wine in there to me. But they continue to fill those pots with water. Dig some ditches and fill your pots with water. It's about time for an upgrade. Even when it looks like it's not working. Hear me. Even when it looks like it's not working. At your word, Lord, I'm going to keep carrying water and I'm going to keep digging ditches. I'm going to operate in this dimension and believe for you to take me to the next dimension. It's time to an upgrade. How do we create environment? We create environment through our words. And if I had a long time, I'd, I'd get on this, but I'm going to tell you something. I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again right now, and you better hear me in this day and time and hour in which we live. Words carry spirits with them. Well, Brother Scotty, I don't even know if that's biblical. You know what Jesus said? Watch this. My words... My words are spirit 
and they are what? Well, let me tell you, if it's possible for words to be spirit and life, yes. it's also possible for words to be spirit and death. Amen. Words create environment for the move of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so I'm encouraging you, let's rise up because God made us with some of His attributes. Words are spirit. Spirits are attached to words. And depending on what words you use, one of two worlds are alerted. They will either work for you or they will work against you. You are no longer someone who talks and it's meaningless. You are regenerated. You now have the attributes of Almighty God dwelling on the inside of you. We have to be deliberate with our words. Yes, deal with reality, but at the same time, every atmosphere that we walk in, we have the ability to affect it, to affect it. What you say is important. You weren't just given a mouth to communicate. You were given a mouth to create. And I am going to believe with all of us in this house, and I don't know what we're going to have to deal with, I realize the possibilities that are out there. I'm not hiding out. I'm not being stupid. I realize there are things that we might have to deal with. I didn't thought we'd have to deal with it like we are right now. But I got news for you. In Jesus' name, this disease will bow its knee. We sang it this morning and I thought I was going to jump out of my skin. We'll bow its knee to the name of Jesus. And I want to, I want to, Susan, would you come stand with me? I want us to bless this church. I want us to bless this church and bless the families in this church. Yes. All three stories that Scotty talked about. The first one, the Lord said, the battle is mine, not yours. But he didn't say, go home and close the door and don't do anything. That's right. You know, he gave them strategy. Yes. The strategy was to send out the praisers and go out yes. facing the enemy. But how did they do it? They did it in praise. They did it in faith, knowing that the battle was the Lord's. Yes. But they didn't run and hide. And then Elisha, following the instructions, they dug the ditches. Yes, they did. You know, Elisha said, this is what's going to happen, but he instructed dig the ditches. So they were doing something. You know, the, the water pots. That's they right. filled the water pots. Something was happening. Faith was happening on all three occasions. So it's to say that just because the battle belongs to Jesus doesn't mean that we do nothing. We activate our faith. We praise. Yes. We, we know who we are. You know, as we move forward, and um, I don't know what you're going to pray, but I want to pray something. Then you so, go. Let me go ahead. You go first. Okay. <laughs> In the very beginning, it's just like I just wanted to pray peace. Yes. I just wanted to pray peace over everybody. So, Father, I just thank you. I thank you, Father God, for Jesus. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for everything that you've done for us, Father, the, the length and depth and breadth of the work that was done to provide for us freedom, freedom and to rise up in who we are in you, Father, in every part of our life, Lord, that we don't run and hide, but we know who we are. We stand up on the inside because you are in us and we are in you. And right now, I just speak peace over this congregation and family members of this congregation. We don't have to go looking for peace. We don't have to figure out how to get it. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Not like the world gives. It's not about your situation being perfect. But Jesus said, I'm going to give you peace that you could live in me and be at rest. And I just thank you right now, Father, 
that your peace is just settling on it. Peace belongs to you. Peace belongs to you, my dear brothers and sisters. Jesus paid for that peace. And I just thank you, Lord. May it just settle in these hearts and let them go out from here going, this is peace that passes all understanding. And I just thank you for it, Father. Bathe them in your peace. Bathe them in your love. Just let faith arise, Father. Show them that you're bigger than anything, Lord. You are the initiator. We only respond to you, Father. We respond to everything that you did for us. And we just receive that peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray for those in the medical field. Those, again, and we've already prayed for first responders, but those who are around, who deal with ill people all the time, God, that in Jesus' name, Lord, I just, I see them, uh, it, it, as we've already heard Psalm 91 this morning, just in a bubble, Keith, I just see in Jesus' name, Lord, encapsulate them in a supernatural bubble of peace that Susan has already released, but also a supernatural bubble of protection. Oh, Father, I thank you. Lord, in Jesus' name, angels around about them. And I, I command by the authority of the name of Jesus that that virus, if they come in contact with it, those germs will fall to the ground and die in Jesus' name. It will not infiltrate. It will not take up its abode in their hearts and in their lives. Father, thank you for their ministry. May they be more aware this week and the weeks that are ahead that they have a, a ministry. This is a ministry. It is a calling. It is an anointing. It is a place in the body of Christ that they need. Father, we walk among this congregation. That's it, Susan. In Jesus' name, we walk among this congregation and we release the supernatural protection of Almighty God. We release the supernatural healing and health of Almighty God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for an abundance of blessings blessing and protection and provision we declare in Jesus name no evil shall befall you no plague or calamity shall come near your dwelling for you dwell in the secret place of El Shaddai oh the most high God you are blessed coming in and you are blessed going out you are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the country in Jesus name and I declare that your hands are blessed Everything you put your hand to will be blessed and will be successful. It will not spread germs. It will, they will, your hands will spread blessing. I said your hands will spread blessing. Your hands will reap an abundant harvest, a mighty harvest. In Jesus' name, I declare, Father God, you are bigger than the economy. You are bigger than anything the world is trying to say or do. In Jesus' name, we rise up in faith and we say this, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. We declare in this house over the people of this church, our families, no weapon formed against us, our children, our sons, daughters, grandchildren, our mothers and fathers and grandfathers. In Jesus' name, no weapon formed against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. We declare and we release the promise of Almighty God. I wish above all things that you might prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Let God, let God arise. I said let God arise. Let God arise. Let Almighty God arise and his enemies be scattered in Jesus' name. And I declare, Lord, you will have for yourself a glorious church, a mighty church, a spirit-filled church, a victorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. We declare and we decree this shall be our finest hour. This shall, we shall see our greatest victories. We shall see everything the enemy has tried to inflict upon God's people turned around and healing miracles shall be testified about. Provision miracles shall be testified about. You are a mighty God and we agree with you, almighty oh, God. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Protect our homes. I thank you that our homes are blessed. That 
we are blessed in everything that we are doing. God, the angels of the Lord are, sur are surrounding our homes, our automobiles, airplanes, every place we travel in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that we shall experience. And boy, I'm just, I'm just telling you, i got to release this. God is saying, I believe, God is saying it is time for an upgrade. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God says, I bring an upgrade. I'm a, when you know that something great is fixing to happen, when the enemy begins to rise because there's a, there's a deeper revelation and an upgrade of who God really is that is fixing to be manifest in your life. I'm talking about you about to see things you ain't never seen before from the hand of all my, oh my God, I'm feeling it. I'm telling you, listen to me, church. We're going to see signs and wonders and miracles in Jesus' name. I'm declaring it. I'm decreeing it. I am prophesying it. It is time for an upgrade. I said it is time for an upgrade. It is time for an upgrade. God is about to show us things about Himself we have never seen before. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we're getting ready to know Him as El Shaddai. We're getting ready to know Him as Jehovah Jireh. We're getting ready to know Him as Jehovah Rapha. We are getting ready to know Him in all of His glory, in all of His aspects. Thank you, Father God. We declare it and we decree it, especially over the families of Life Church, over our city. God, we pray for our leaders. We pray for our president. We pray for all those who are giving advice. Lord God, move in them. Thank you for people who are smart, who are trying to figure all this out. But Lord, we are depending on more than their smartness. Give them supernatural ability to kill that virus in the name of Jesus. God, do it however you want. But Lord, in Jesus' name, we are praying for a mighty breakthrough. And your, here is our prayer. Oh, Father God, be glorified. At the end of the day, I pray that before this is over, we won't just have a national day of prayer when something bad's going on. We'll have a national day of prayer of giving thanks to Almighty God that this thing has been defeated, diminished, and put under our feet. Lord, let us have a national day of praise. I am believing for a national day of praise in the name of Jesus that shall be declared and it shall be decreed. Glory be to God. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we just thank you now in Jesus' name. We're believing. We're standing in faith. You know, I want to, you know, you assume that especially folks who would come out today, but there may be people watching online. And you know, say, you say, Brother Scotty, I am washing my hands seven or eight times a day. Let me ask you, has your life been washed in the blood of Jesus? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Because I pray that the world will understand through all of this that every human being is going to stand before Almighty God one day. And our only hope is to be able to stand before Him and say, I was washed in the blood of Jesus, God's Son. Yes. If you're here today and you'd say, pray for me, I, I want to make sure that my life, I'm not sure, but I want to know that my life has been washed in the blood of Jesus. Anybody? You're among home folks. This is serious time, folks, and it's time for some serious reflection. If you've not been washed in the blood of Jesus, it's time to know it. All right, I want to pray for those watching online, for people who will hear this at some point. Father, in Jesus' name. In fact, why don't we just all pray this prayer. Say, thank you, Lord, for the blood of your Son, King Jesus. We wash ourselves in that precious blood today. Thank you, Jesus. That blood not only cleanses our sin, it brings health and healing to our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. We receive it, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said. Well, I'll remind you, just, check, just keep checking this week with the schedule. We have no plans right now except to be back here next Sunday for a time of worship, a time of praise, a time of communion. 
where we will celebrate the blood of Jesus. Now, we'll, we'll be mindful of our community and, and the laws. Uh, I, I know in California, I was talking to Ryan Jackie, they cannot meet. They, 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 if they, have a, they cannot have a group of more than 50 people. So they're, they had no choice. It's been mandated by the state. And so we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but I tell you what, I know who will be in tomorrow. And the same God that has seen us through all that we've been through through all these years is, is still going to be there. And let me tell you something else. That's right. And if we have to, we'll meet in homes. What do you think they did in communist China? We'll meet somewhere. We'll figure it out. We'll stream it online. I'll come up here and preach to a camera and shout. I'll do whatever I got to do. This worship team, I've already talked. They'll, they'll do whatever we got to do. We're going to worship God. We're going to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Boy, and I tell you, the Lord reminded me of this this morning. I think I wrote it down. I want to say it just right. Uh, and, and no matter what happens, no matter what happens, uh, In times of crisis, listen to this, corporate worship is designed to remind us no person, no place, and no thing can knock the Lord God Almighty off of His throne. You can believe this, at the end of the day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are seated on the throne. And I guarantee you we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And not only that, my God, I'm about to preach again. That blood that Jesus sprinkled on that heavenly mercy seat is as powerful as it was the day He sprinkled it. Nothing can knock Almighty God off of His throne. Can I get an amen in this house?